Okay, today we're looking at section 2.8, two variable inequalities. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to graph some lines. They might be dotted, they might be solid, and we're going to shade one side or the other. Um, the first ones we're going to do you have done before. These are linear inequalities. Um, the boundary is the actual line. If there is an equals with it, it's solid. If there's not, it's dotted. And what that means is the points on the line are included when there's an equals. They're not included when there isn't an equals. It just means if you plug a point in that's on the line that's dotted, it makes it false. Okay, and, and they're not included anyway. So let's try the first one. What's the graph of the inequality? So um, most of them are going to look like lines, but not all. So the first one is a line. We're going to graph it just like we would if we were graphing a slope-intercept line. So um, what do we put on the graph first? So we're going to go down one, put a dot. And then what do we do from there? Up three, right one. So your B is negative one. Your slope is 3 over 1. Now, before I draw that in here, um, the greater than means dotted line. Okay, so let me give you some hints on the side. If it is a greater than or less than, dotted. If it's a greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, your line is going to be solid. Okay, and that means dotted line points are not included, solid line points are included. So on this one, it's just a greater than, so I'm going to draw a dotted line. Now we have to shade either to the right of it or to the left of it. Or you could also say above it or below it. So when it says greater than, what do you think that means? What? Above the line. Which side is that? The left side. So above the line would be all the points above it, which in this case would be this side. You don't have to get every square inch shaded. Just do a little bit, and I'm going to know which side you picked. Um, so this one, greater than, shade above. Now, how do you know which is above and which is below? If that is going to mess you up, you can do it another way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a point either on one side or the other. It doesn't matter which one. And I'm going to just check it to see if it works or if it doesn't. Okay, so I've already shaded the left side. So I can pick a point on that side if I want to. And if I pick a point and plug it in, it should be true where I've shaded. If I pick a point that's on the non-shaded side, if I plug that in, it should be false. Okay, so I usually pick 0, 0, and 0, 0 really isn't on the line on this one, even though it kind of looks like it might be. So I'm going to pick another one this time. So I'm going to pick, um, I'll pick this one. Okay, and I'm just going to use that as a check. Thanks. Okay, so that ordered pair is 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4, 0. So I'm going to plug it into my original. Um, so 0 goes in for the y, greater than 3 times negative 4 minus 1. So 0 greater than negative 12 minus 1. Is 0 greater than negative 13? Yes, so if it is true and you have shaded on that side, you are correct. If you get a point where you've shaded and you get a false, that means you better change it and shade the other side. You could pick another test point over there if you wanted, but really if you've chosen one and you get a false, shade the other side. Okay, so you're going to shade one side or the other. Usually greater than means above the line, less than means below the line. Do you guys remember doing these? Yes.
Okay, so we have a map of an amusement park. Um, we need tickets for small rides, tickets for large rides. We don't want to spend more than $15 on tickets. How many small or large rides can we ride? So in that problem, they also say you can buy 60 rides for $15. Okay, so that is something that we do need to write this equation. So we don't know how much, um, how many small rides or large rides we have. That's two different variables. So I'm going to say 2x plus, or wait, it should be 3, sorry. I'm looking on this map, small tickets are 3, or small rides are 3 tickets. Large rides are 5. And then we're going to go on 60 of them. So we have an equation that we now can put on the graph if we want to, and that's down below. So first thing you have to do is, is actually just write an equation. Um, also, it shouldn't be equals. What should it be? What? So we only have $60. Can we spend more than 60 No. So I'm going to go less than. Could we spend exactly 60 Yes, we can. Okay. So my equation again is 3x plus 5y less than or equal to 60. Now, the other day I showed you another way to find out what the intercepts are because really we only need two points. I don't want to solve this one for y just because that's a lot of work. Um, so you could divide by 60, simplify the fractions. Whatever is under the x would be the x-intercept. Whatever is under the y would be the y-intercept. Or we can just plug ordered pairs in. So for the x-intercept, I'm going to plug a 0 in for the y. For the y-intercept, I'm going to plug a 0 in for the x. I think that's how most of you did it when I was looking through. Um, so we'll just do it this way today. So if I plug a 0 in for the y, um, what would x be? 20. It'd be 3x less than or equal to 60, so you'd get 20 there. So 20, 0. I think I missed one. One, two, three. Okay, if I plug a zero in for the y or the x, what do I get? Twelve. So I'm going to go up twelve. I'm going to connect them. This is only a first quadrant graph because you can't have negative numbers of rides. It's also solid because of the less than or equal to. Do I shade above it or below it? Below it. So anything in this little triangular region here works, including um, the points that are on the line. So th this is kind of what they do for these. If I say um, I want to go on 10 small rides, how many large rides would be left? Okay, so I'm going to go over to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm going to go up to here. And then if I go over, I, I should be numbering these like 1 to 20, um, but I'm not going to do that because they're so small. So I'm going to count up to that. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I could go on 10 small rides and six large rides and still have enough money. That's kind of why they do these in graph graphing methods so you don't have to plug it in every time. You could just look at the graph and know. So the next one is kind of like this one, except they change it up just a little bit. Um, suppose you decide to spend no more than $30 for tickets. If you spend 30, how many tickets would you get? 120. So would the equation be the same otherwise? Yeah. yeah. So we could extend that to more tickets if we wanted. We're not going to go do that. I'm just going to write the equation again. So we'd have 3x plus 5y less than or equal to 120. 
and that would give you more opportunities for rides because you have more tickets. Okay, this is the one that you probably might want to jot down just because it's going to look kind of crazy at the end. Um, you could do this using tables. Um, strongly recommend that you don't, though. I think it's easier on the graph um, than to try to figure out what the tables are and where you are at. Um, so the first thing we need to do is solve for y, just like we always do. So we're going to subtract 1. And we're going to divide by negative 1. What happens to the inequality when we divide by a negative number? Flips, Flips over. So you we're looking at y greater than um, negative absolute value x plus 2 plus 1. So I did flip the signs on each of those quantities that I had on the right. Now we're going to do what we've been doing the last couple of days. We need to decide what is this graph actually doing when we do all that stuff to it. So what's the parent function of this one? What's the, the most basic graph of this one that we could do? Absolute value. Okay, so remember the other day we had lines. Lines are kind of basic. Absolute value where you have the V is a basic one. Um, parabola where it goes to zero is also a basic one, and that's just the x squared. So my parent function is y equals absolute value of x. So I'm going to graph that one first, and then I'm going to change it according to what this one is doing. So absolute value of x would be 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, and then the same on the other side. And then I'm going to draw that in. Okay, now I'm going to change colors. Colors would be great if you had them. And let's first, though, describe what this thing is doing. So um, I'm going to go to this one. What does the plus 1 mean? Up 1. So we could do that right now. What we're going to do is we're going to take those five ordered pairs that we have and move them all up 1. Okay. But there's another step that we could do kind of at the same time so we didn't have four graphs on here. We can have three. Okay, the other part is this part right here. Is that a right to or left to? Left. left to, because remember, right or left is always the opposite sign of whatever's in there. So we're going to go left to and up one. Could we not do that at the same time? So if you want to do a separate graph for every single thing that you do, you can, but you have to do at least, you know, these two, you know, you can do together. So I am going to do these together. So from every ordered pair that I've already marked, I'm going to go left 2 and up 1 and put a new dot. So left 2, up 1. Uh, left 2, up 1. I don't think I could get a smaller piece of graph paper. Okay, so, so far we are at the one that is in blue. Now, what do we do with that negative? What do you do with this one? Is it flipping it to the left over the y-axis or flipping it down over the x-axis? Do you remember? Flip a few pages back. I think it's like four pages maybe. There's like a summary. Um, and look to see which one this one applies to. It's on the, it's flipped over the x-axis. So um, reflect over x-axis. Now, that's only if we started with that one, right? So all we're going to do is we're going to take these order pairs, we're going to flip it down, okay? We would have to do that one first for it to look exactly over the x-axis because we're moving it anyway. So I'm going to flip all of these just down. So right now where the vertex is, that's kind of where your axis is. I'm flipping over that, okay? So um, with this point directly above it, the one that's here stays where it is. This one then would go down here. This one would come down here. This one would be two away. And this one would also be two away. OK. 
Okay, so it's now the green. Again, if you're doing these all in pencil, it's going to be kind of tough. Should my line be dotted or solid? Dotted. So we do have to fix that. Oops, dotted. It's like the new, it's like where the vertex is. Yep. You, you can only really reflect over the x-axis if you do it first. Um, reflecting just means wherever it is, move it down. Just flip it down. And then that vertex point stays exactly where it's at. Oh. So could we have done that first? If that part's going to mess you up, do that first. So you would flip it down. We would be flipping the purple one down where it is, and then we'd be moving it left two and up one. So if that messes you up totally because it's not truly over the x-axis, then do that part first because then I think it will make sense. You can do these in really any order that you want as long as you do all of them. Now there's one thing that we haven't done. Anybody know what it is? Shade. So now where do we shade? It's supposed to be greater than, which means above it. So that's going to make this one look a little bit messier yet. Um, let me see. I'm going to go with yellow. Shade above. I'm going to kind of go like that just so you kind of get the idea and I won't mess everything else up. So above it would be where I've shaded yellow. Now I think doing tables of each of these would be really hard because you would have to keep track of each table and then go from that order pair to the next one. Um, definitely hard on graph paper, but it's harder yet using just tables. This one definitely did look better this time than it did the last time I did it, so um, I'll definitely post this video instead. So lots of different stuff. So um, I would do, when I do these, I would definitely write the left two, up one, reflect over, um, make sure you've written, is it dotted, is it solid, because then that way when you're actually putting these things in, you can do it kind of just piece by piece. And like I said before, maybe the reflection part, if there is one, you should do first um, rather than like we did last. Um, I was going to say one more thing. I don't remember what it was. Oh, what if there isn't a negative? Then we would have done left two up one, right? We would have stopped at the blue one and we would have shaded above that one. Okay, it still would have been dotted and we would have shaded above it. So just because we had to reflect it, it's only because of that negative that was there. If there isn't one, then you don't have to do that part. Now for these, these are a little bit easier because um, they give us the graph, we need to come up with the equation. Now I've already graphed the pink one in there, which is just the basic absolute value graph. So I put that one in, it wasn't really there. Since it's a V, it does go off of the absolute value graph. We need to figure out what it is doing. So first of all, um, with a dotted line, what do we want? It's above the dotted line. How do I want to write that? And I don't want the equals, right? So it's just greater than. If I look at my A part, um, is there a number I need to put in there? This one would go up one, right one, up one, right one, right? Remember that's the slope part of it. So I could put a one there or I could just leave it um, without. It is an absolute value graph. Has it moved right or left? And it is right three units, right? So do I do plus three or do I do minus three? Minus three. And then did it go up or down? And how many? Plus two or minus two? That 
that's it. So we still looked at all of the parts. It's just that we did them as we saw them. Um, if this one would have been reflected down, where would I have put the negative? In the front. If it would have been reflected over the y, it would have been negative x plus 3 at the end. Or a negative parenthesis, x minus 3 would have worked too. So those aren't quite as hard, but you're still doing all of those pieces. So let's do another one. So with this one, um, it's still based on the absolute value graph. Is it greater than or less than? Because it's above. Um, no equals because it's dotted. Um, have they reflected this one? Yep, they've reflected it down. So where do I want that negative? Okay, so right now. Um, also, let's see what they've done. Um, the slope of this one is hard to find. I don't know any of those. I'm going to look in the book really quick like for this one. If it was an exact point, we would just do the slope of it. We might need to... Uh, Okay, let's not worry about that one right now. Um, what did they do? Um, I don't even remember doing this one this morning. I think it moved, actually. Um, I think that is supposed to be, um, got it number four. I might be looking at the wrong one, too. Okay, I think they're going by twos. That's what's messing me up. Okay, so I was thinking they were going by ones, and I'm like, how do we know what that is? So they are going by twos, so what would this be? A three and a four, right? So this would be negative four, and this would be three. So in my um, absolute value, what do I need to write if it goes left four? Plus four. And then if it goes up 3, plus 3, we've already taken care of the flip down. Um, could you actually write this one in a different way, maybe? Um, it doesn't look like they've reflected it over the, the Y. And the examples they did in the book didn't do that, but I'm not sure what they are looking like in the homework for today. So um, that's what this one looks like. Check the axis if you don't really know what those points are. Um, if we looked at it then, we would go down one, right one, down one, right one. It looks like the slope is a 1. If you weren't sure, you could actually pick two points, find out what the slope is, and then plug it in there. Um, and you might get negative 1 um, on another one as well. And that's it. So I definitely think these last few are much easier than the graphing itself, especially when you're moving it three different times or four different times. So those take a little bit of time. So when you're doing these, just be careful. Um, do a separate graph for each one. Make sure you don't forget the shading part. And um, remember, test probably next Wednesday. Um, what we're going to do today is 2.8, 118, 9 to 45 odd. Um, and remember that test corrections are due tomorrow.